Father, we are everybody. Let's hear for fathers, all the fathers, you guys. So incredible. So I guess I'm going to lead us in prayer. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so gracious God, we thank you for bringing us together. We thank you for the gifts of faith and family and friendship. As we receive this food, we ask that you bless it and bless all those who go without and help us always to be mindful of the least in our midst. And so we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, most woman, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. So just, uh, I want to say something about Father Lou. We're going to present him with a gift. Uh, Father Lou has been with us the past seven years, and when I was uh, assigned to come out here to St. Augustine's and St. Mary's, um, I knew that it was important to, to try to keep the mass schedule like it was, and so that was important for, for Lou and I, and so I invited Lou, and that was the beginning of our ministry together. Um, little did I know that uh, Lou and I had met once before um, when I was in the bishop's office, and Lou came down to do some planning for the Mass of the Holy Spirit. And uh, he reminded me that we had met once before, and I said, well, you know, what was your first impression? <laughs> no. There's no swearing. He called me a little something that starts with S. But he said it was redeemable. So, uh, But I've been so grateful to have the chance to minister with Lou. Lou's been a, a priest for 37 years. Um, if you know, he always he leads with kindness and compassion, but he also has a tremendous intellect. And I think Lou has this great gift of kind of breaking up the sacraments and the Word to help us understand where God is in our own lives and also where God's working in his life. And so I'm unbelievably blessed that Lou and I have had a chance to minister together, but also that uh, Lou and I will be going together to IC in St. Anne's, and Lou is going to be living at St. Anne's on the second floor with his newest housemate, uh, Gianni. So, uh, if you're a visitor and you don't know Gianni, he's four-legged, <laughs> he's a Pomeranian, and I call him an emotional terrorist, because <laughs> he's all of four pounds, maybe five pounds now? Seven, seven pounds, yeah, seven pounds, and there's nothing wrong with that, no body shaming, but he's seven pounds, and he really kind of runs the roost. Uh, but with this great new addition to Lou's life, we have a gift, and so Deb is going to share what this gift is. So this gift is a certificate for um, a training session, <laughs> not for Father Blue, for Gianni. <laughs> okay, so now 
Now it's Father Cliff's turn. Right. So um, I did have uh, two pages of a speech written out. I'm not going to read it. <laughs> there's, there's too many people here with food, and we just want to move on and have some fun. So I just want to say a couple of things. Yes. So um, when Father Cliff first came here, this is exemplifies what he is like. Um, when he first came here, one of the first things he did um, as a new member of St. Augustine's was a baptism. And after the baptism, people came up to him afterwards and said, are you sure you did that right? <laughs> because in his own inimitable way, he wanted to move things along. And the baptism was very short. So he said, why are people coming up and asking me this? It was valid. It was short but valid. Um, and I said, well, here at St. Augustine's, we like big symbols. And ever since then, he has constantly in seven years said, I know, I know, big symbol, big symbol. So anytime we've celebrated any rites. So I think that characterizes a particular thing about him, that he is someone who listens and responds, that he is willing to um, listen to other people's ideas, that he is willing to um, change some of his ways to accommodate the needs of the people whom he serves. We know that he's very generous. He um, particularly shares a lot of food. Um, you probably recently heard the story about his fish with the sisters and <laughs> Sister Celestine's comments. He has given us all pork with garlic, garlic, and garlic. <laughs> Multiple loaves of bread, um, cookies, candies, gums, all kinds of things that, um, some things, you know, for fun. <laughs> and we appreciate that generosity. And I think that it reflects how generous of a person that he is. He has many accomplishments, and I'm not gonna list them all. We got his, you know, many of you were able to do um, his feedback sheets about a few months ago and you all listed so many of the same qualities. His kindness, his humility, his uh, ways of responding to people. But I think most importantly, Father Cliff has been the presence of God among us. Personally, I have greatly appreciated the way in which he has supported me as a lay person and as a woman in the church. He has been present to the dying. He has led us through sacraments. He has journeyed with the grieving. Many of you had suggestions for him um, as ways of improving things. So a couple of those were that... Um, we wished he would spend more time with us, and that he took more time for himself. A little contradictory there. But we hope he follows the latter in his next adventures. Many of you mentioned his humility and his sharing of that with us. C.S. Lewis once said, humility is not thinking less of yourself but thinking of yourself less. And I think that is something that Father Cliff embodies for us. When Father Cliff was first ordained, Monsignor Yannick, in a newspaper article, um, had this to say about Father Cliff. Cliff brings an unwavering honesty, genuine love of people, and the heart and mind of a prophet to his ministry. We know he will continue doing that as he leaves us. And I can only say something that Cliff is fond of saying. Age quote Aki. Do what you do. Yeah. 
And now we have our youth minister, Carlos Gonzalez, who is also going to say a few words about Father Phil. script, but we're going to try to get through this together. Amen? Amen. In Mark's Gospel, in the 8th chapter of Mark's Gospel, verse 36, it says, For what shall profit a man to gain the entire world, but lose his soul? For what shall profit a man to gain the entire world, but lose his soul? This is what Jesus asked his disciples in that chapter. If I were to investigate the lives of all the faithful Christians here, of all of you, the lay faithful, of the, the priests that are here, of the deacons, of our teens, I would assume that most of us live out this verse pretty well to some degree or another. We grieve a little differently, we worship a little differently, we work a little differently as Christians. As Father said earlier, we're not of the world, but we're certainly in the world. So there are certainly differences in the way that we live our life. If we did the same investigation into all of our priests in the Diocese of Syracuse, we'd see the same thing, hopefully. We would see that they're living differently, not for this world, but for the next. Realizing that there's nothing in our faith or, or our accomplishments if Christ is not the center. Our priests, if you'd allow me, I just want to talk about the priests, seeing that we're celebrating a great one here. Our priests whom God has chosen to be of service to his people all come from different backgrounds. All are gifted with different talents, with different strengths, with different weaknesses, with different idiosyncrasies, and yet still called and chosen with eyes of mercy to serve the Lord, to shepherd souls to heaven. This week, 25 years ago, the Lord confirmed the call on a young man who felt a tug, a nudge, a desire to save souls for his vocation. For the past 25 years, Father Cliff has humbly and faithfully served the Diocese of Syracuse. In an article written by the National Catholic Register titled, Priest Par Excellence, a parishioner said about Father Cliff that the greatest charism that he have has what is in, was his enthusiasm. And I think we can all say that that enthusiasm 25 years later has not simmered down at all. In that same article, his boyhood pastor, Monsignor Genick, and mentor, said the following, Father Cliff is a priest. Father Cliff is a priest 100% of the time. No sacrifice has ever been too great for him to make and building in the kingdom of God. He's always had a strong desire to work for the salvation of souls, and now he's carrying that in his priesthood. And here we are 25 years later, and that still holds true. And on a personal level, on a personal note, to Father Cliff, on behalf of all of us, we are so thankful for the seven years uh, that you've been here in the 25 years of priesthood service. I can speak for myself that if it wasn't for this man, I would not be going back to the seminary. It was through his, through his inspiration and witness that I'm where I am today. Thank you. Uh, we actually have two gifts for Father. One he knew about because he contributed photos to it. But there's a great video if you have a chance. I know guys, if you want to walk by, that just shows wonderful pictures of him um, in Binghamton. There's a great picture with him at uh, Father Brendan Foley, who was at St. James Middle School when Father started her, his priesthood, who is now a priest. So if you want to take some time at some point and view the video show. And special thanks to Meg Castellini. I don't know if she's here, but she took all of our pictures. So can let's give her a big round of applause. Yeah. Yeah. And then what I think is so beautiful about the gift that we have for you, Father, is that it is inspired by two people. Um, 
We had our first meeting and Sister Marcia had a beautiful idea for a gift. And as soon as she mentioned what it was, Mike Conway's name came up. And both of these, both Sister and Mike are wonderful um, contributors to both our parishes in their service. And so did you guys want to say So from all of us at St. Mary's and St. Augustine's. Oh. I think we're done, right? We gotta be done. Uh, <laughs> No, just thanks for, for the kind words and this wonderful gift. And if you look closely, I'm sure this is the case. If you look closely at St. Augustine's or St. Mary's, you can probably see the two dogs in one of the windows. <laughs> so if you can find out where they are, Father Lou will give you a hundred bucks. <laughs> just before we finish, I just want to say thank you to uh, certainly to Lou for being here and celebrating priesthood, but also to all those individuals that kind of made this, uh, made this work. I'm so grateful to my family who's here. And uh, many who made the trip, just grateful for that. And um, mindful of all those people who've gone before us. And um, so, just thanks very much. On behalf, on behalf of uh, Renee and Debbie and myself, we'd like to thank all the volunteers that made this happen today. Uh, beautiful music and liturgy. There was food and beverages, the decorations, the slideshow, communications, and to all of the that are going to stick around and help clean up. <laughs> um, and especially for all of you who came today. We appreciate that. Father Cliff and Father Lou will be over on the chairs by the windows to receive people, uh, your well wishes and everything. Don't forget to sign the book. Or if you have cards or gifts, the table underneath the banner over there is for that. And we hope you enjoy the rest of the, the day. Thank you. Oh, uh, one, uh, one other thing. If you've already finished eating and um, to get up and make room for other people because we have so many people here today to wish these two well. Uh, that would be great. Thank you.